I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for that daily bread quickly now? Because I'm expecting a miracle today. I don't know about you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this, we say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, we bless you, precious Holy Spirit. This is your job, teaching us and guiding us into all truth. Saying to it that we never walk in a lie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As we submit ourselves to you completely today, I declare every body lifted, every yoke destroyed right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I know we're in the week of um, um, Christmas, and, and it's so all about celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we are talking to you about who is Jesus. So you will understand and take full advantage of what the season is all about. Je when we say Jesus is Lord, oh, many people don't understand what we're talking about. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. It's just awesome. That you reveal these things to us. It's awesome, Lord. And, and we appreciate you so much. So much. So much. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes I get emotional about these things. It, it, you, you don't study these things to find them. I'm telling you the truth. You don't. And sometimes you, you look at things the Spirit of God have taught you. And they are not just uh, they are not just for teaching's sake. They are for you to walk in. There is nothing the Holy Spirit will teach you that will, is only for boosting knowledge. No, sir. You see, and that's why many don't learn. Because you see these things, you don't go to him and say, Holy Spirit, teach me this thing. Why do you want him to teach you? It is in our walk with him. As we are doing this work, we get into a place where we need to ask him questions. Because when you're walking, you will meet obstacles. And Lord, what is this about? Why? And then he will give you an information. He will give you an instruction. And I, oh, okay. And then you carry out the instruction. And then sometimes you, you sit down and look at that instruction and say, Lord, why did he instruct me this way? And then he begins to talk to you about it. And while he's talking to you about it now, he's talking to you so that you will improve your walk with him. There is no other way to improve your walk with him than having accurate knowledge of him. Many things we have believed for so long need to be revisited. But not revisited with, with the um, mind consciousness. Revisited in the place of fellowship with him. So the more we know him, the more our eyes are open to see him. The more we walk in the truth. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So thinking about it many times, ah, you know, I, I'm so grateful to God. And I believe anyone, anyone who will sit with him, anyone who will stay in his presence, wait until he explains it to you. There were times I would ask the Lord things and then he would take him up to a year, I remember specifically. Many years ago, it was about a year after I asked him that he came to reveal it to me. Think about it. I studied something, I didn't get it, so I was like, Lord, what's the meaning of this? And then he began to explain to me. It took him a year. And, and I, not that I was praying every day, I said, Lord, you've not spoken to me. No, I'm telling you, this, I forgot about it. You know how you just feel like, well, maybe, maybe it's not for me to know. And then one day he just showed up and said, remember you asked me concerning this? I said, yes, I'm ready to talk to you about it. I remember that day I was in a meeting. I said, Lord, please wait. I need to write. And I had to race to my place. 
got out my diary and said, Lord, I'm ready. And then he began to talk to me about it. Then I realized he never forgot. Hey, I even realized he answered me from the very day I asked. Now what happened? He began to take me precept upon precept, line upon line, you know, now until he got to that place where he now opened it up to me. Now he needed me all that one year, he needed me to get certain experience and certain information right. Now that is the same thing. Sometimes you ask the Lord for something and it looks like he's not answering. No, he answered you the very day you asked him. But is he answering you and you receiving that thing is completely a different story. Because now he has answered you. He's released something to you. I mean, it's just like when you when you go around government cycles. Um, cycles. The fact that something was approved today doesn't mean you will get the benefit today. Is it, you, it may be approved today, but you are going to get the benefit of that approval many months after. Because they will tell you, oh, there are processes to follow. We have to follow this process. Now, now, that's how heaven operates. So trust the Lord in the process that he's taking you through. Trust him every day. He still knows something. You ask him, oh God, can you bless me? He said, yes, I have blessed you. Where is the blessing? He takes you precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and eventually you wake up one day and like, whoa, the Lord just blessed me today. No, brother, he didn't just bless you that day. He has blessed you since, but it has taken you this long and today to recognize the blessing. That's the truth. So you see, Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus is like that. But don't be afraid to ask. Ask anything, anything. I was telling you yesterday, he said to Abraham, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, when he spoke that word to Abraham, he wasn't mincing words. He meant it. And he's a keeper of covenant. He's a keeper of promise. He doesn't need you to remind him of the promise he made to you. He keeps it because when he spoke it, he spoke his own. Hey, uh, hey, uh, you know. <laughs> When he spoke it, he didn't speak it because he was high. Or maybe, you know, maybe on joy. Maybe you praised him so much so he was just high on joy. And he just began to speak. No, brother. Every time God opens his mouth, it's according to purpose. So he blessed Abraham. And that's the reason he came to Abraham and said, Abraham, yes, sir, I'm going to teach you something. Okay, so I'm ready to learn. I'm going to teach you about tithing. Every blessing you get, a tenth of it is mine. Now that's where tithing came from. A tenth of it is mine. Okay, sir. I'll do that. Now start with this. So he started with that. With the loot he got from, from the dealing with those kings. And Kisarek told him exactly what to do with that tithe. But you see, he started that process because of the promise that God had promised Abraham that in him, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And I was telling you yesterday, now then, Jesus wanted to fulfill that promise made to Abraham. But to fulfill it, he had to step into his ministry. He had to step into that priesthood of, after the order of Melchizedek, where he now receives our tithes. See? Now, when we tithe to Jesus, who's our high priest today, guess what he does? He uses the tithe to bless all the families of the earth just like he spoke to Abraham. So how does he do it? Very simple. When I take my tithe to him, 
And I thank him for what he's just done, the blessing. He, you know, you get blessed first before you bring your tithe. He never tells you, go and look for tithes to bring. You, you tithe out of the blessed 10% of what has been given to you. So you bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. I, I recognize you as the blesser. Because Moses said, you shall remember the Lord, your God. So Lord, I remember you, Lord, and I recognize you as the blesser. And here you are. And here I am with your 10%. My tithes. Ready to give it to you. Lord, can you just tell me what you want me to do with this? Can you tell me where you want me to deploy this? And think about it. Your high priest who is Jesus now in his ministry as high priest. He now commands you. Oh, give it to so and so person. Give it to so and so church. Give it to so and so organization. And then you go there and say, oh, the Lord, the Lord asked me to give you this. Now, it can be anyone. Anyone. I'm telling you, it can be anyone. But many of us are not participating in this, with Jesus, in this ministry. We are still functioning like the Old Testament folks. So even when we could bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, oh, that's why, it's, that's why we say we should take our tithe to one place, even the church. And then some pastors try to say, take it to where you are fed. Not necessarily. That's not what the word of God says. Because the truth is, now they, 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 say they have a good reasoning concerning it. But then the truth is this, the one who feeds you is Jesus. And the money belongs to him. So why do we argue about where to take it to? Instead of us to just say, let's take it to the owner. The owner is alive. He speaks. And he's a, he's a priest. Are you getting it? So when we take it to him, he receives it from us. And then he commands us what to do with it. The same way he commanded Abraham what to do with it. So what did he tell Abraham to do? That's what the servants ate. And that's what Abraham told the king of Sodom, that he had reserved portions that he was going to send to some of his friends. Where is that coming from? That was the tithe. That was what he was doing. Melchizedek didn't take the tithe and go with it. He told him what to do with it. So it's the same thing he's doing today. He tells you now what is he doing when, you, when he commands you what to do. He is fulfilling his words to Abraham because the Bible says through Abraham and his seed we are that seed today because he said if ye be Christ you are Abraham's seed so through us notes notes he said it is the Christ generation that is going to fulfill that promise that God made to Abraham God had said through your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed. And God was specific about it. The seed is not Isaac. The seed is Christ. Now why? Because in Christ, God knows that there is no way we are going to come into Christ without our priest. After the order of Melchizedek being in his place, that is Jesus. That's why in Hebrews it says, over here we tithe to Jesus. Many people have read that scripture, they don't realize what he was talking about. We tithe to Jesus, our high priest. And then he says, he ever lives. He's not a kind of priest that changes. No, he's alive. So how do we tithe to Jesus? We tithe to him by bringing our tithe directly to him. Not through any intermediary, we bring it directly to him. And he tells us what to do with it. And he is conscious that it only brought the supreme. Yeah. He is conscious that he is fulfilling the blessing, the promise that he made to Abraham. So all the families of the earth being blessed is what he's doing. Brothers and sisters, he commands you to take your tithe to your neighbor over there. And then you go to that person and say, well, last night the Lord spoke to me that I should bring this to you. Whoa, wow. You mean the Lord sent you? Yes, the Lord sent you. You know what that means? The blessing of God has come to that family. It could be anyone. Now, we are supposed to be sharpening our hearts, sharpening our senses to hear his voice. Whose voice? The voice of our high priest. The voice. See, now remember, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
Every time we bring our tithe to him and we wait for his voice, what happens? Life is ministered to us. That is the ministry of Jesus. So when we bring our tithe to him and he gives us instruction, take it to so so and so and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will obey you. You see that word he just gave you? It can give you health. That word he just gave you, it can bring blessings to you. And as we keep obeying him, all the families of the earth are being touched, are being blessed. He said this gospel shall be preached in every place as a witness. That's what we do when we tithe. Bring our tithe to our high priest. Praise God. My time is up today. I pray for you right now. That your eyes will be open to these things. And that you begin to relate with your high priest. Even Jesus after the order of Melchizedek. And you will begin to fulfill his word and his promise to Abraham through us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless you today. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.